Hello! Today's video will be a book haul revisit for the second quarter of 2022. I always really love watching book um, haul revisits um, where people will go through the books they bought six months ago, a year ago, two years ago and um, having a look to see if they've read the books and I think it's a great way to hold yourself accountable to see if you actually read the books you buy and also to see if you're actually still interested in the books you bought um, some time ago. So I'm going to be looking at the books I bought in the second quarter of 2022 um, so April, May and June. Um, I've mentioned it before but I have all my unread books right behind me here this is the TBR for October and these are the rest of my unread books and ideally I would want to read the books I buy within about six months. So since these are all books I've got between three and six months ago, um, I'm hoping I will have read about half of them. I know that's not exact math but it feels like that's what it should be right now. I always write down all my books in this book journal. It's not anything fancy, just literally I write them down and then tick them off as I read them. So yeah, let's just see how I did. The first book is Women, Race and Class by Angela Y. Davis, which I have read. This is a classic on intersectional feminism and a really interesting read. The next one I've also read, Eleanor Knows by Claudia Pinheiro. Um, this is translated by uh, Francis Riddle. A lot of people have read this book and loved it and so have I. Um, this is a great uh, book in translation and will probably be on my favorites of the year list. The next book I hold is The Island of Missing Trees by Elise Shafak, which I haven't read. I always try to read really hyped up books um, sometime after the hype has died, died down, which I think it has now. Um, so I'll try and read this soon. I actually booked a holiday to Valencia in November um, and I think this will be the book I bring because it's um, set in the Mediterranean. Then I have Ellen Foster by Kay Gibbons. I have read this one. This is a book I really enjoyed when I was reading it, but right now I couldn't really tell you what it was about. So that's that one. So Ellen Foster and the next couple of books I'm going to mention are all books from a um, charity bookshop and they have an interesting selection as in they don't really have recent releases and they don't really have classics, they mostly just have books sort of published between you know, 1980 and the early 2000s. So they're all books that I maybe would not have bought if they were a full price but because they were only uh, like a couple of years I figured I could check them out. So the next one is The Tide That Binds by Kenta Roof. I have read Our Souls at Night by this author and really loved that book so that's why I picked this one up and it has an elderly protagonist which is always something I'm interested in but I haven't read this one. The next one I also haven't read which is The Namesake by Jhumpa Lahiri. I've read um, some of her short story collections and really loved those. Um, but I've never read any full-length novels by her, so still very excited to read this one. Then I have The Vanishing Act of Esme Lennox by Maggie O'Farrell. I've only read Maggie O'Farrell's memoir, I Am, I Am, I Am, um, and I loved her writing style in that one, so um, I'm curious to see if her fiction um, is also something I will enjoy. Then I have uh, Crow Lake by Mary Lawson, which I also haven't read but is on my October TBR. Um, of all the books I bought in that charity bookshop, this is the one I knew the least about. Uh, I hadn't heard of the book nor of the author, um, so I 
picked it up purely um, on what it said on the back. And I believe it's a book with a strong sense of place, lots of nature writing, um, lots of family drama. So it takes a lot of my boxes, so hopefully I will like it. And then the last book I got from there uh, was That Old Ace in the Hall by Annie Proulx. So this is a book that I'm probably least excited about um, of the books on my uh, TBR. Um, it is about a small town community though, which I really like, so I think it might be one that surprises me. Um, I'm just not really inclined to pick it up at this moment. So that was all the books I bought in April. Now for May I only bought two books in May and I have read them both, so, so that's a success. They were... Um, a Woman in the Polar Night by Christiana Ritter. This is a memoir um, about a woman who goes to live in the Arctic for a year and I really enjoyed it. And the next one is a uh, modern classic, um, I Capture the Castle by Dolly Smith. This one I didn't like as much as I hoped I would. I really enjoyed sort of the first half of the book but then um, and it just kind of fizzled out for me in the end. In June I visited my friend in Cornwall and on the way back I stopped for a day in London so all of these books I, I bought in London. The first one is uh, Nevada by Imogen Binney. So this is sort of a cult classic by a trans author about a trans character and yeah really recommend this one. And the next one is Ace, what asexuality reveals about desire, society and the meaning of sex. I've read this one in October and um, I'll talk more about it in my wrap up. But um, I can already say that this is one of the best non-fiction books I've read in a very, very long time. This one I haven't read yet, The, trans uh, the Transgender Issue by Sean Fay. I was looking for a non-fiction on what it's like to live as a trans person in a modern day society um, and I think this is a good sort of entry level book. Next one I have read um, and that is Song of Solomon by Toni Morrison. Toni Morrison is just one of the best writers of the last couple of decades and um, this once again proves it. Um, it is my favourite by her, but still really, really excellent. Then I have The Secret Lives of Church Ladies by um, Disha Filio. I haven't read this one, but I am really excited about it. Um, this is a short story collection um, that I've heard so many good things about. Um, I just haven't really been in the mood for short stories lately, but if I am, this will probably be the first one I pick up. I have read Isis Ballad by Magda Zabo. I read this with Karen uh, of the Roving Reader earlier this year and this is a really beautiful portrait of a difficult mother and daughter relationship and um, yeah, I've really enjoyed reading this with Karen. And then the last book I uh, bought in June of this year um, is Lolly Willows by Sylvia Townsend Warner. I think this is going to be a really good autumn read. Um, it, just ha it has witchy vibes um, so I might try and squeeze this in uh, over the next couple of months. So those were all the books I hold um, in the second quarter of this year and um, what, which ones I read and haven't. So let me just tally up the results. Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. There I hold 18 books and then I have read 9. So exactly half. However did I manage that? Yeah, I'm still really interested in reading um, these books, so that's uh, a good thing. Um, 
if you have any thoughts or comments on the books I've talked about today, um, you know, talk to me in the comments. Also, if you want to do a buddy read on any of the books I haven't read yet, um, I'm always up for that. That's it for today. I'll talk to you later. Bye bye.